What happens if your brother sins against you? What do you do? Well, let's find out today. Hello, friends, and welcome back to our spiritual exercise group. We're on week 24, exercise 24. We're doing this for a whole year, and we're almost halfway there, which is kind of crazy. This one is restore your brother. Okay, when we talk about brother, we mean brother in Christ. Well, we have a mission, and that mission is to exercise ourselves unto godliness so that we become spiritually strong. That's the whole goal of doing this for a year is to become spiritually strong. And this is based on 1 Timothy 4, 7, where Paul tells Timothy to exercise yourself unto godliness. All right? We have a vision for our group, and that vision is to spiritually work out every week for one year. We will meet once a week to examine a foundational biblical truth. Then throughout the week, we will read it, meditate, and pray over it until the Holy Spirit brings us in the truth. What are we reading, you may ask? The book is called Spiritual Exercise by Watchman Nee. All right, and he has 52 lessons for us, and we're just doing one a week for a whole year. We're on week 24. And that's our vision for this group. Uh, every week, we challenge ourselves to memorize scripture. And this week's scripture is from Galatians 6, 1. Brothers, if anyone is caught in any transgression, you who are spiritual should restore him in the spirit of gentleness. Keep watch on yourself, lest you too be tempted. All right, so let's hop in. And let's talk about forgiveness and persuasion. So when we talk about when your brother in Christ sins against you, okay, what do you do? And this is all based on Matthew 18, 15 through 35, when Jesus tells us a parable of the unforgiving servant. And so let's talk about to forgive. So Peter asks, how often should I forgive my brother? The point here is to forgive boundlessly. All right, 70 times 7, when Jesus says that, really means our forgiveness should be unlimited. Okay, it's not a matter of his repentance being true or false. That's huge. Okay, if your brother repents, whether that repentance is true or false, it doesn't matter. You forgive him 70 times 7, basically unlimited Okay, another look. We forgive generously. We must understand God's forgiveness to us and then have that same generosity towards our brother. The Lord expects us to treat others as he has treated us. The forgiven person cannot be unforgiving to others. That's that whole story, that whole parable that Jesus shared. And at the end, it says, in anger, the master delivered him to the jailers until he should pay all of his debt. And then Jesus says, So also my heavenly Father will do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother from your heart. So that's a big deal. Forgive generously. And even if your brother is not genuine in his repentance, you still forgive him. So let's talk about persuade. So not only do we forgive, but we there's this persuasion aspect to restoring your brother. All right, we must persuade and exhort our brother. All right, T we have to tell him. Show him his fault between only you together. But first, bring him and you alone together. All right, only you guys. And then tell him, uh, show him his fault but make sure it's not in public. All right, and what's the purpose of this? The purpose is to gain your brother back, okay? Help him to see what he did wrong, and that way he could repent and turn away from that. Okay, if your brother, or if your brother does not accept that, here's what God says. God says to take one or two more others, okay? Then you do the same thing. You tell it only to these brothers, who are experienced and probably have spiritual weight in the church, right? Bring it to them, lay the matter before them and ask their advice. What happens if he still doesn't repent, realize he's wrong, 
after telling the brothers. Then you tell the church, okay? And this is in verse 17. If he refuses to hear them, you tell the church. I think here it means more of the responsible brothers of the church privately, not at a time when the church like assembles and you're up front in front of everybody and, and you're, I, I don't think it meant that. I think it meant you get more of the responsible brothers of the church, um, not during an assembly. All right, that brother should set aside his own opinions and accept the testimony of the two or three witnesses. He needs to repent and acknowledge that he is in the wrong here. All right, and another little point here is we should not trust our own feelings nor be confident in ourselves. We ought to accept the feeling of the church, like if we're the wrong ones and we're doing the wrong, okay? And, you know, our pride gets in the way. We should not trust our own feelings and we can't be confident in ourselves. We got to accept the feeling of the church that Christian brothers especially when there's many of them. All right, so really that is an overview of the chapter. We are to forgive generously and we're to persuade our brothers. All right, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Let me know if you guys have any any experiences with this. Thanks for joining me this week. You're going to go ahead and read this chapter, meditate on it, pray over it until the Holy Spirit brings you in the truth. All right, thanks guys. Have a great week.